if I'm not paying attention, I'll do 130. If I, or, what do you mean if you're not paying attention? Like I basically run twice a day. <laughs> okay. And if I'm not counting it, like I'm, I'll just usually, keep going. I'll just do it every day and it'll end up 130, 125, stuff like that. Even if I'm not paying attention. And I usually try and I've wow. been trying to hold 125. I talked to Buck. We're racing now. We're Did we have it. to put a limit on we're, you? We're <laughs> cutting it back. <laughs> Yasin Abdallah is a superstar in the world of cross country, a three-time All-American, Sudanese national record holder, and Olympian. Yasin's path to success, though, was far from straightforward. There's a lot of like happenstance. My dad forgot his backpack. Like it was probably 400 meters like away, uh -huh. but it felt like seven miles. Like <laughs> felt like I went on a journey. And he's like, "Go get it!" And so I'm just running, and I remember I, I enjoyed it, and I get the backpack. I'm like, "I'm good at this." I come back. And I was like, you're good at this. Like, and that was going into high school. He's like, you, you have to do this when we get to, when you get to high school. I was like, okay. Yassine had a slow start in the sport and at times considered giving it all up. But through dedication and grit, he became one of the top distance runners in the country. I wanted to quit and then I got like a little crumb of success, like thing to keep me going. Yassine's story is also deeply tied to his Sudanese heritage. Born to immigrant parents, his connection to the country was strong, and it led to an unforgettable Olympic experience representing Sudan and running his first marathon ever. I ran 2.11, and that's a, that was a Sudanese national record, and then I was pretty happy with that debut, especially because the Paris course is like considered the hardest course in marathon history. As his collegiate career draws to a close and a top five team around him, Yassin remains focused on achieving even greater heights. Goals, we want to win crosses, cross nets as a team. I want to win individually on a set of like a bunch of records, win track titles. You know, it's easier said than done, so that's always the goal. First off, just want to kind of get to know you a little bit before you became this amazing track athlete that you are now, cross country, everything. Um, take me back to where you grew up, and I know you moved around a little bit too, so uh, start you know, wherever you're comfortable with. Yeah, I, I grew up a lot of different places, but I used to say zero to seven, I was lived in Maryland, okay. seven to 14, I was in Utah, mm -hmm. Draper, Utah, which is a little bit south of the capital. And then 14 to 21, I was in Texas. So it was like even split. Wow. And then 22 to 20, last two years, I was in in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee, and then now I'm mm -hmm. in Fayetteville, yeah. We'll get to those two in just a little bit. But uh, why'd you move around so much growing up? My parents just were, were doing a lot better every year mm -hmm. as far as work and just learning about, like, my mom started a business when I was, like, nine so like just a lot of moving around to make their lives better which made our lives better um so yeah just my parents very cool and you have some siblings too as well right so you got a couple brothers yeah i've got three younger brothers all all boys so. oh younger so yeah. you're the oldest yeah. of everyone uh -huh. how's that relationship <laughs> i like it i mean people say the grass is always greener but i feel like we all like where we are in the order mm -hmm. uh any other athletes um, the youngest is playing football now, but no one else does track. Really? Yeah. That's so, then you got to walk me through that. How did you get into track then if no one else in the family was doing it? It was a lot of like happenstance or like good coincidences. Like I'm, I remember we were in Costa Rica for a family vacation. My parents loved Costa Rica and uh, my dad forgot his backpack. Like it was probably 400 meters like away, uh -huh. but it felt like seven miles like <laughs> felt like I went on a journey and he's like go get it because the boat's boat's waiting for us to leave or something like that mm -hmm. and so I'm just running and I remember I, I enjoyed it and I get the backpack I'm like I'm good at this I come back but I was like you're good at this like we, and that was going into high school he's like you you have to do this when we get to when you get to high school I was like okay and I was just so bad yeah. when I got to high school I was horrible <laughs> uh losing to the guys losing to the JV guys losing to the the girls I remember me and one of the other guys who started started out shout out to Susanna Susanna was one of the really good girls I remember we just wanted to beat her 
Like, that was our goal. Like, let's just beat Susanna. And he did and I didn't. <laughs> like, the first season, it was so hard, I remember. Uh, but, yeah, it got better over time. And then uh, I think after the second year, at the end of the second year, I was probably, like, above average or average. And then after that, it was, like, a lot of improvement. Because you went to high school in Austin, right? So I feel like the competition there had to be pretty pretty good. It was It was really deep. I was in 5A, so... It's funny. I think I'm the the best out of 5A in, in the last little while, but out of 6A, um, I mean, not everyone's going to know the names, but some of the top guys in the country, like out of 6A, are still some of the top, like either just went pro or are like top guys in the NCAA now. So it's interesting. Yeah, I never raced them in, in high school, but yeah, they they were all around. So tell me about your family a little bit, because you're dual nationality, yeah. right? My uh, My parents are both Sudanese both from Khartoum, which is the capital. And uh, they it was important to them, like just Sudan was super important to them. We visited every other year, at least until the war broke out like a year and a half ago. Okay. Uh, so we left like two months before it started. Wow. So um, very big for them. And then when, when we would talk about like running internationally, which was very recent, like the last two, it was 2022, so like very recent in my career they were like we would talk about running for Sudan and then just in case the opportunity came up we wanted to make sure I had my passport validated so I remember it was like a, f- a fever dream I I woke up at 4 a.m. on a Wednesday because I didn't want to make w- miss practice 4 a.m. on a Wednesday flew to Dallas got there at 6 flew to DC got there at like 9 I'm on like two hours of sleep my uncle picks me up we go to the embassy wait there for like four hours like wow my head's like I sh- nodding was, off. Yeah, yeah, nodding off. Get my picture taken. Come back same way. Dallas. Come back to Austin. It's like midnight again. I'm like, did that just really happen? Yeah, you know, I haven't seen it. Like, <laughs> but I got the passport done. And so yeah, U.S. citizen, but also Sudanese citizen. Um, both are very important to me. But, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, it's it's not like a competition. I'm both. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you. You said your high school career didn't get off to like the best start, but obviously you ended up uh, running at Texas first, and that's a great program too. So how did that come about? I was lucky. Like I said, it's a lot of luck for the my running career to get off how it did. Like in the moment, I remember thinking I worked so hard, and I did work so hard. Still, it's I, I work really hard. Um, people say too much so. A lot of the guys on the team say too much so, but when I look back on it now, it's easy to be like, to separate the emotion from the reality. And it was like, okay, like I wanted to quit. And then I got like a little crumb of success. I had one good race that first season. It was like in the middle of the season, it was like a pointless meet, but I had one good race. I was like, okay, let me do track too. And then track came and I ended the season with a sub five mile. It was like another crumb of success. Like my season still ended at districts because I was JV, but um, it was, a nice like thing to keep me going and then after that because I broke five some of my teammates invited me to train with their club and I met uh like a coach I still talk to today coach Paul Carosa um helped me a lot for the first like four years and so then that was another thing it made his group was so fun met one of my best friends Creighton his son and he was the number one 1500 runner in the in the country so it was like okay <laughs> Like a lot of coaches, like he was the like people were coming like home visits everything oh, wow. to get him, and so they'd come watch him at practice. They'd see me, and that mm-hmm. got me a lot of visits just because mm-hmm. like you know what I mean it's like I was working so hard, but it's luck you know what I mean right. that I I can't control that I got to be around him and coaches wanted to be or to see him so they saw me. So then I got probably I think I went on six visits. Okay. Uh, Wake Forest, Rice, uh, Texas, A and M. Well, I guess not six. And then I, I talked to Harvard, but but that okay. wasn't as, that wasn't as, they weren't as interested. But uh, so of of those visits, only A and M was like just me myself setting it okay. up. Like the rest of them, they saw they saw Creighton or they saw Travis was another teammate. He ended up going to Rice, mm-hmm. and so they were like, you can come too. And so I ended up going to Texas, but it wouldn't have been an opportunity if I hadn't been in the right spot. Same thing. We won nationals as a team. And we won on the DMR. Me and Creighton were both on the relay, actually. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and it was the same thing where 
I wasn't even supposed to be on the DMR. Like I was trying to make the 5K, which is like 45 minutes before. So if I'd made it, I wouldn't have been there. Okay. I was trying to be on the 3K, mm -hmm. which was the next day. I got bumped out the, the last day of qualifying and I was super upset, but it ended up being like, you know, maybe I like my headspace would have been in a different thing. I wanted I wouldn't have wanted to run as hard if I had the yeah. 3K the next day. And so, you know, it, it always ends up working out for me, uh, for me in the way that like things, I think they're going wrong and then it ends up panning out. Yeah. Was that national championship your first year too? Or was that second? Uh, no, I was oh, a junior what? actually. You were a junior, But it was okay. my first year of eligibility. It was my first national championships. And I think it was my first time running a relay too. So, wow. yeah. It was, How amazing was that though? I think a lot of, a lot of the time in sports, at least for me, I think the the joy comes from it not being ex expected. Like it's like you work hard, and then um, you want to, like if you work hard enough that you know it's gonna happen, it's not as joyful. I would say it was very surprising. So I would say it was very joyful. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. It was <laughs> awesome. It just didn't feel like there's only probably three people in the world who thought we were gonna win. Like like uh, me, Cruz Gomez. He ran on the the first leg. Yeah. He was like, he was like, we're going to like, we're going to win. Like I was texting him. No one else thought we would win. They were like, just try and get points because <laughs> we were ranked 10th out of 12 teams. Oh, wow. In. It was hard to believe we would win, but I knew I was better than I looked. Cruz knew we were better than we looked. And then coach Watson uh, was our coach. He was like, he didn't outright say it, but he was like, you know, this is one of those moments, like there might be an opportunity to take it. Yeah. And so I, I took it and it worked out really well. It was awesome. Absolutely. But yeah, definitely joyful. A lot of the times I, I say that things happen a little bit too late for it to be enjoyable. Like I ended up breaking four that year, but I wanted to go much faster. So breaking four is a big deal in running. Mm -hmm. But I was just looking like, like if it had happened a year earlier, I would have been so happy. But you know what I mean? It happened a little bit too late. I was like, ah, oh, okay, sub four, but I wanted to go to 355 or whatever. So it's a little bit hard when you it's so fast. I really just can't wrap my head around that. <laughs> it's it's funny the the easy races are are the the fast races are the easy ones. Like the ones like okay. that one was super easy. But I've run races uh like this at SEC's outdoor I this this year this this last one. Mm -hmm. I went 346 which is about which is for 1500 which is like 404. Okay. So much harder. Really? You know what I mean? So it's funny the races that are like record breaking or anything like uh -huh. that just super easy nationals super easy <laughs> see it's funny because i feel like when people watch you guys running on the tv or something like it it just looks almost effortless the way you guys are just kind of gliding and no one actually can tell how much y'all are just booking it yeah it's actually <laughs> it's weird even for me because usually i'm if i'm out of track i'm racing so when i'm not when i'm out of track watching it's like they're really moving like i yeah. was at i was at the olympics watching the 1500 this this um summer mm -hmm. and they're just flying i'm like i didn't realize they're going that fast yeah. but it's so fast <laughs> it's so fast um but yeah it's, it also is a little bit of an illusion because the cameras are on the front and the yeah. front is the good guys and the good guys are comfortable <laughs> right, <that's> like <laughs> like if you i just raced this on saturday mm -hmm. and uh there's a bunch of pictures of i was like right off the front pack yeah so it's like you see Patrick, one of my teammates, uh -huh. looks really good. Karami looks really good. They were in the front. And then I'm in the back. <laughs> they don't look as good. So, yeah, it's, the carnage is usually not where the camera is, which is That's funny. I deceiving. would have never thought about yeah. that. But um, so also after Texas, you end up at Tennessee. You had All-American honors at both schools. And now you're here at Arkansas. You kind of touched on it. You had your Razorback debut recently. How did it go? Yeah, I mean, I wanted to, I had really lofty goals and, you know, it's not like uh, I can't accomplish them, but it's definitely a reality check. I got eighth, definitely the most competitive race that's, I would say, other in the regular season in cross-country history. Yeah. We had nine guys under the course record at uh, Nuttycomb, which is like far and away the most historic cross-country course. Which means you know the nine guys, nine guys in the race better, have run faster than anyone in the Anyone last else. whatever hundred, whatever hundred to thirty years into yeah. the way. So it's a little bit it's upsetting, but it's you have to do it both ways. I can't just I can't be like oh I'm just better than everyone now, but I mm -hmm. also shouldn't be like oh I got eighth I can't do anything I wanted to do because it's like the eight best guys ever. 
So. Right, and that's amazing. Yeah, so it's it's hard, but <laughs> it was it's fun. It's it's nice to get to train with two of them. You know, that Karami is and, that is true. Karami and Pat beat me, and they're <laughs> they're incredible. So it's nice to be able to gauge off mm -hmm. them uh, in yeah. practice. So I was researching you a little bit, and I came across an article where you were quoted as saying you've had like the perfect amount of failure throughout your cross country career. What did you mean by that? I would say it's well the perfect amount of failure for anyone is is the amount right before they have they quit. So <laughs> I would say it's it's really it it has been crumbs like I said earlier it's like some people are winning and and uh winning from the gun told they're talented like yeah. like you have to be great like we're going to make you great. I remember my first season people were like just do it for the credit like and then you can quit after. Yeah. Probably the first two seasons until I broke 5 minutes. So it's like the first year already i'm i'm below average like don't take this seriously like just get it for the credit and yeah. focus on school the second year i was better but my grades uh i went to a really good really good high school so my grades weren't horrible but like it, they weren't straight a's so they were like um maybe stop running to focus on stop focus on the school so that's two years of the eight years i've been doing it so 25 percent of the time people are like stop running and then uh, the third year, I got pretty good. I was probably like top 100 in the country, so still nothing crazy. So now it's like I'm getting a little bit of positive feedback from my coaches and stuff, but it's like, okay, now maybe it's too late because you're a senior, people get recruited as a junior. Yeah. It's like this is, this, is, this is how it's been for a lot of the, my career. The only outlier where it's, I would say, it was like really like just incredible luck was when we won nationals. I was like, okay, <laughs> that was like, because it, it wasn't the deepest field, but it had the best probably 1500 runner in college history yard Nagus. he just got bronze in the olympics oh wow and he's got the uh, i think the american indoor mile record and it was the fit the dmr is basically an indoor mile at the end so it was definitely not the deepest but it was the hardest to win is what people would say so right just a, just really good luck to win that but the rest of the, my career it's been like like come on like can i have like a little bit more it's like i'm working 100 percent, and then i get like a 70 percent result but I feel like I'm, it's made me pretty good at focusing on me versus me. Like it's, you can't compare yourself to yeah. everyone else. That's like, that'll shoot you in the foot. Uh, and it can get pretty demoralizing pretty quickly, especially cause. No, I bet. Yeah. Like running is pretty, uh, it's literally just hurting yourself. Like if you think about it, it's like hurting yourself, uh, year in, year out. And then going to the well, like as much pain as you can take in <laughs> races. So. <laughs> Uh, well, so going through all that, like who was, who were the people that you really kind of talked to or leaned on and, and kept you going? Uh, it's never been like one person, I would say. At the start, it was just me. I don't know why I was, at first I just wanted to quit, but I think after I ran like 505 in the mile, sophomore year track, I kind of flipped a switch where I was, I just wanted to do it. I don't know why, yeah. what changed, because it was never like, you're going to be good at the start. It wasn't you're going to be good for a long time, but for some reason I was like, okay, I, I'm going to be better at least. I'm going to be better than what I am. Push yourself, yeah. And now I'd say I definitely am addicted to it a little bit. Just the way I approach it is is very much like, as far as mileage, like like let's say Karami, Karami will do like 60 or 70 miles a week, right? And if I'm not paying attention, I'll do 130. If I, or, what do you mean if you're not paying attention? Like I basically run twice a day, <laughs> okay. and if I'm not counting it, like I'm, I'll you just usually, keep going. I'll just do it every day, and it'll end up 130, 125, stuff like that. Even if I'm not paying attention, and I usually try and I've wow. been trying to hold 125. I talked to Buck, we're racing now. We're Did cutting, we have to put a limit on we're, you? We're cutting it back, <laughs> just because I don't know. Some people get biological feedback as far as I'm tired, blah blah blah. But me, I just I'll feel great, and then. In the past, I've felt great, and then there's overtraining in running. Yeah. It's only in endurance sports and powerlifting. It's it's overtraining syndrome. Basically, you feel great, but you perform terrible. So it's funny. It's like you can't have the uh, Kobe Bryant mentality or stuff yeah. like that. Like I've tried that probably six times in in eight years. It's like, mm -hmm. and it takes like two months cycles. It's like oh, very gosh. hard to deal with. I've finally broken the habit and. Uh, just trying to be smarter about it and yeah. it's it's been good right now because it just it's like the, the scope creeps as far as i want to i'm going to be smart this time 
okay, I feel good. Let me do one more. Okay, let me go one more mile, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm just on empty yet the national meet or whatever meet that matters. Yeah, so we don't want that. I'm not doing that anymore. Yeah, so you get like a runner's high when you're when you're going or you just kind of, you just feel so comfortable. I would, I wouldn't call it a runner's high. I would say the run, running definitely feels different to me than normal people as far as, as far as my heart rate's low enough where I, I was telling my brother like last week, it's like meditation, I would oh, okay. say. Especially easy runs. Easy runs like, if I'm running with the guys, like we'll talk the whole time. So... And if I'm running alone, it's like I have the energy to talk the whole time, but I'm not talking. I'm just thinking. Okay. I think a lot. But uh, so, yeah, I'd say running when you get to it's not even like you have to be super good to do it. It's like I'm, tr I'm trying to get my cousins into running right now. I'm like, give it. I think I said after three weeks, it'll feel good. And after two months, you'll be able to do that where you're like, OK, I'll just run nine minute pace, 10 minute pace. And it's not like killing me. I can just think about like whatever I want to do. I can like. Dis disconnect from my phone, disconnect from TV, whatever. Um, so I'd say that's how that's one of the things I really enjoy about running. Well, absolutely. Yeah, you, know, you can just get out. I've been doing a lot of the run, uh, of my runs on the cross country course. Okay. It's like a three mile loop. Yeah. And so I'll just do two loops, three loops, four loops, five loops, however long to get my run in, and then that even makes it easier where I don't have to think about where I'm going. Mm -hmm. So I can just you just I'd, cruise. I, yeah, I call it like meditation. If okay. Anything. Yeah, because I know a lot of people run to like kind of shut their brains off and like you said, disconnect. So um, I also want to talk about you mentioned the Olympics in Paris. You were there. Walk me through how you got the opportunity to represent Sudan. Yeah, a lot of people have reached out like, how can I do it too? It's 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 two things like you can't just send anyone like I, I was lucky enough. First of all, my parents, both Sudanese. Sudanese community is very tight knit. It's not like just showing up to America and asking for a spot or whatever. Yeah. Lithuania, like just some country where I have no connection. So my parents, like, they call a person who calls a person who calls the head of the, the Sudanese Olympic Committee. So it was it, it was that easy as far as my parents did the whole thing for me. Uh huh. And then I wanted to represent them at Worlds 2022 for the 5K. It was in the U.S. It was right after the season. I was like, I want to do this. And then for the Olympics, they came to me and they're like, okay, do you want to do this? I was like, of course. And then I wanted to do the 5K originally, but there was a rule change, uh, I think in January. And they, they only allowed, uh, basically I didn't have time to get a qualifier for the marathon. And for the other events, I just wasn't ready yet. So you, you can only send someone who has, doesn't have a qualifier in the marathon or the 800 or the 100 meters. And I'm not a sprinter in the 800 <laughs> Is much closer to my main events, but there's a big difference between the 800 and the 1500. Yeah. And I wanted to think about this cross country season. The way you train for a marathon is a lot like the way you train for in the summer for cross country season. So you just do long, long runs, lots of volume. And then as the season comes, you cut it down like we're trying to do now with me. Um, so I just was like, I'll do the marathon. I'll be better at that. I've, a lot of my coaches in the past have said, like, you're a marathon or like, we're, there's no marathon in the NCAA, so you're gonna do like whatever 10k, 5k yeah. mile, but you're a marathoner. Like if I had to, if they were gonna tell me what I am, and so I was like, let's see. And so I, it ended up going really well. I just coached myself, did all my runs on the pretty much on the same treadmill, or and it went really well. I ran 211, uh, 211, 440, and that's that was a Sudanese national record. And then I was pretty happy with that debut, especially because the Paris course is like considered the hardest course in marathon history. Oh, wow. There's lots of like discussion about the conversions. Like, I don't know if I'll, when I'll run another marathon, but they're saying like anywhere from three to three to five minutes. I would say definitely on the higher end. Like as far as if you run 211 there, you can- Oh, because it's such can, a hard course. Because it's such a hard course. Okay. On a fast course, you could run from, uh, what is that? 209 to 205. Yeah. Wow. And I definitely believe that, so. Okay, so- Backtrack me. You had never actually run a marathon before, though. Yeah, no. <laughs> so what was the preparation like for that? I mean, how long did you have to actually, like, train yourself? It was eight weeks, but I think counting – or seven weeks, but I tapered for two weeks, which is basically just letting off. Okay. So I would say I was building for, like, five to six weeks. Man. So uh, it wasn't too hard. I I, I, I pretty much did three three big three big workouts, which is uh. Jeez. So it wasn't like very daunting for you then to, to do no, it. No, I uh, the way we trained at Tennessee, was very much. I thought it was 
a very much on the marathon side, lots of volume. So, so, uh, it didn't scare me and I knew I was, I was better at that stuff anyway. So I tried to keep it simple. I think that's definitely what helped me break the habit of pushing too hard. I think that the second week I tried to do like six workouts in a week and normally we'll do, normally people will do two to two to four. I did six and then I was just dead for a couple of days. I was like, okay, you're going to ruin your opportunity yeah. if you don't break this habit. And so I just really dumbed it down and simplified it. And since then I, I've been doing, I've been much better about that. Okay. Uh, and it went, it, yeah, I went really well. I didn't have a, I think I had one bad workout and I was working out in like a hundred degrees. It's Ooh. in one of my YouTube videos. But uh, yeah. other, other than that, it was like a super smooth process. So I was well, happy with it. You mentioned the YouTube videos. I watched a couple of them. Uh, there was the one like the where you were talking about the day of the race in in Paris and I saw the videos of you kind of like you were doing your one last run before the race how cool is it to just go for a run through Paris <laughs> it was it was it was super awesome uh to be there I didn't get to see Paris as much actually because because mm -hmm. uh like my family came and so we okay. planned it so so they're there and then right after since they've been in Paris for whatever, seven days, five days at this point, then we'll go to Geneva, Switzerland. So basically I was locked in for the race and then yeah. we went to Switzerland How right cool. after. So it was awesome. So I got to see Switzerland, but I didn't really get to see Paris as much. Okay. But you also did get to see your family, which is great. Yeah. How many like family members did you have there supporting a you? A lot, a lot. I think I mean, my mom came, my brothers came, a bunch of my, I'd say like at least 10, probably closer to 20. Were they like out. setting up at different spots along the, the race or were they all just like at the finish line or something? I don't know. I saw them <laughs> at the start and then they couldn't get into the finish line because I didn't know, I guess. Yeah. You have to get tickets or request tickets for the finish oh, line, okay. which I didn't know. Interesting. Yeah. Know. It's a marathon. It's like right. on the street. But uh, So they were at the start. I don't know how they got in there, but yeah. I saw them at the start. They were like That's way past cool. security. I was like, how'd you guys get here? <laughs> and so I saw them there, but on the course was so crowded that I don't, I don't think I picked out anyone's cheers like you just kind of like black out yeah i would say like <laughs> it was too many people like that was people say like like a marathon is is shocking as far as how much support you get like a normal one but that one was like i don't even know if i could put a number on it. i'd guess like at least in the thousands along the course oh wow like maybe ten thousand. i don't know if that's like a crazy number but at least no, in the thousands I mean, that's amazing, so many people though yeah, that's really especially for your first marathon. And so you've got all these family members there. You place 33rd, I think you, you set a record. Walk me through kind of like what it mo the moments were after that kind of celebrating with your family. It was really fun. It was, it was I was I was I said uh, along the way that um, a lot of people like I didn't have to get the standard. So some people get there and then they're checked out or they've already had a long season and have been loaded up. But me, I was like, I have, to, I wanted to prove myself there, yeah. that I deserve to be there, and I felt like I did that, and it wasn't, I don't know, it was definitely more of a relief than like a joy. But, yeah. <laughs> but it was, it was awesome. I was proud of myself more for the the preparation, the race. Okay. I I always feel like running is more about the coaching than than about the actual act of running. Like I always go there, I run however I feel, I tough it out. But mm -hmm. the preparation has been always the part that's like hampered me and then I show up dead on the line or whatever so gotcha but I I mean I knew I was ready before so yeah I don't know maybe because it was such a underdog sort of mm -hmm. situation I wasn't stressed out before I enjoyed the whole race and then I was just relieved after but also not I didn't have to, I didn't I wasn't flooded with emotion maybe just because just because I don't know I knew I was ready yeah yeah stuff like that think you'll do another marathon again I don't know. We'll see how the, <laughs> the NCAA season goes, but I I think I probably will. I'm not sure. Okay. I liked it. Yeah. Just had to ask because you did so well in this one. But um, I also want to ask, like, what's the recovery process like after running a race like that? My high school coach, Coach Carrozza, was actually, he was like, be careful. Like, the marathon could, like, kill, like, like really mess your body up long, like, for a while. Yeah. So I was really worried, and then he, he sent me to a lady who got me, like, a on all the like multivitamins, fish oil and stuff like that to make sure like if you have de deficiencies and then you run a marathon, you're really going to be messed up. So yeah. made sure I was right on all that stuff and uh, electrolytes and all that. And then after the race, I felt terrible, worse than <laughs> I'd ever felt for probably 24 hours. Like that was worse than the actual race. The wow. After the race. 
I couldn't sleep. It was like so much pain. Oh. But then the next two just days, like your joints or like just all over. It was like everything. Places I didn't know could hurt. <laughs> hurt <it>. My <laughs> elbows, my shoulders, my back, yeah. my lungs, my ribs, oh. my Achilles. Like everything was just weakening out. No wonder you don't want to do another one right yeah, now. <laughs> so, I mean, maybe it's just the first one. Hopefully, but that was terrible. Yeah. And then, then the next two days were normal race fatigue, just still terrible, but nothing crazy. When I came back, I felt I felt fine. I had a little injury from a little bit before the race, yeah, which bothered me more than the actual race fatigue. But I feel like I came off it fine. It was just those first three days were kind of tough. But I mean, it's just a race. People, I feel like people try and like make it uh, bigger than it is, but it's just a race. And so it took 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 like three days, but I was fine after. It, actually, the pre nationals that I just ran, mm -hmm. it, it felt pretty terrible. I don't know if I would say <laughs> as bad, but it was that was definitely more painful than any race I had before that. So the why do you think that recovery. is? I don't know. I maybe the the first race of the Rust Buster or something. Okay. But I just remember like after the race, trying to sleep, it reminded me of the marathon. Like I was just like, ouch! Like everything hurts. I don't know if I can sleep. I do want to ask you about your YouTube channel. We've talked about it a couple of times now. You've got like over twelve thousand subscriptions on there. How did that get started? Uh, I started it. I don't know. I've always wanted to start one. And I, I'll say I'm, I'm very good at, like, like everyone's got that friend, the friend who says, like, oh, I'm gonna do this. Like, let's let's do this. Let's do this. Like, oh, I, I like, I want to be an artist. I want to do this. And then like years will go by and they won't do it. I'm, I, I'll do that. But year four will come by and then I'll do it. It's like, it's <laughs> okay. like weird. Like I, I'll put it off, but it'll happen. Right. So I wanted to do it. I've been, I've been making videos and like little stuff since I was probably like at least 12, maybe earlier. And I've still got that stuff on YouTube. Maybe I'll do like a, a recap video. A throwback. Or yeah, a throwback video. Yeah. But uh, I just took it seriously. I remember I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do other than running. And mm -hmm. YouTube just seemed like a way to, to hone like the skills of like um, consistency and dedication and like being self self-driven. Like I'd say I was very lucky with running. Like I've said, like in the moment I was like, I just work, like I work so hard. It's like inevitable. Which it's true that the harder you work, the luckier you get. But it's definitely I did get a lot of luck, and so the YouTube I would say it's the opposite. Like, like I wouldn't say I've gotten luck at all. You gotta put in the work to make those successful. Yeah, it's, it takes, and I'm I'd say I'm. I just put in a lot of effort to the videos. Like, I I have videos. I don't know. I I, I kind of call them scripted videos. I don't really have a name for them, but I basically write a script and yeah. name, and then I'll pick like a topic and and uh, do some really like in depth editing, and those will take me like. I think my first one was four minutes long and it probably took me 10, 11 hours to make. Wow. And so that's like, those feel good to, to make though. They're like, they're, they, it feels like a race. It feels like I put in 11 hours, yeah. just get drained, post the video, <laughs> wake up the next morning and then watch it. You know what I mean? So. Well, I gotta say your editing skills are pretty solid. I, I was looking at them. So did you teach yourself how to do all of that? Yeah. It's, it's, watch some tutorials or something? Or? I... I don't remember how I learned. I think yeah, just I remember I used it to out. be really bad at it when I, <laughs> when I was younger, like twelve. I, I was just really bad. I think a lot of the time it's just about effort. Like yeah. I actually wanted to do it. Like there's things I'll say I want to do, but, and even think I want to do, but I don't really want to do them, and then it won't get done. Yeah. I feel like a lot of time people make excuses like that, mm -hmm. with, uh, anything from work to, like YouTube or anything like that. But yeah. I think I just, took it seriously. I don't think I watched tutorials. It was, I don't. I actually don't do anything that complicated. Yeah. But uh, I put a lot of. I'd say I put more thought into, like when the music comes in and when yeah. the text shows up, than actually do anything super fancy. Still. So yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it's awesome. Um, and you know, as we just kind of wrap this up, I know this is your last year of eligibility too. So, any goals or, or moments that you're really looking forward to? Yeah, definitely. It's it's been good. I mean, people say it's. it's people say they never want it to end. I'm I'm glad I'm almost done <laughs> because it was a pleasure. But you know, I'm ready to move on. Okay. But uh, goals. We want to win crosses at cross nets as a team. And I want to win. I want to win individually on a set of like a bunch of records. Yeah. Win track titles. But uh, you know, it's easier said than done. So that's always the goal. We'll see what actually ends up happening. I've gotten better at you know. I know I'm trying my best and learning and whatever the end result be, uh, ends up is probably like the best I can do so I'll be happy with that but yeah definitely to win